Hello, you're watching Alf New X, and today let's talk about a recently started airing period idol drama, Zhuo Zhuo Feng Liu, The Legend of Zhuo Hua. It is a 40 episode drama that's been airing on the platform Tencent. It has started airing on the 19th, and I've been following this drama since day one. So far, I've watched 18 episodes, so that's a pretty good point to talk about it. It is directed by Wen De Guang, who is also the director of Jin Xin Si Yu. It is written by seven <laughs> credited scriptwriters. So I'm not gonna list all their names here. It is based on a novel called Ceng Feng Liu, written by the author Sui Yu R M. It's led by Jing Tian Feng Xiaofeng as our two leads. Also featuring this year quite busy and have been on a lot of dramas actor Zhou Yiran and our familiar old friends of Perry Drama Land Xu Haiqiao. Also guest starring Wang Likun, who's been around for a long time. The drama is shot from September 21st last year to January this year. Based on what I've seen so far, I'll give it a 1.8 gold mine rating. It has things I really like, but then it has a couple of really strong weak points that I just cannot ignore. Let me, as usual, first introduce you to the rough synopsis of the story, the setup of the characters. This is following pretty closely to the original novel. The female lead character is a daughter of a concubine of a very rich businessman, and she's never been really noticed as she grows up. Her biological mother also dies very young, and the official wife of the father doesn't care about her. Her mother actually comes from a really well-educated family, although very early on, her mother got sent to brothels because her family was charged with a crime. Her mother doesn't have much memory of where she actually comes from. She always emphasizes that even when you're a girl, you have to study, you have to learn stuff, you have to change your own fate. So our female lead grows up in this family environment where all the women are just not studying, but only her. Our story setting is this fictional dynasty that actually allows women to take official exams due to a couple of generations before our story setting, there was a female emperor. Our female lead gets arranged with a marriage that she doesn't want to go through. She runs away, tries to take the official exam that's been held at the capital so that she can become an official and get out of this marriage. Once she gets into the capital, she will encounter our male lead character who is a prince, a younger brother of the current reigning emperor who is already a middle-aged man. So this male lead character played by Feng Xiaofeng is also not very young and he's been a very well-known general. So he's the fighting type of prince. They're gonna become instrumental in the politics of the court. Obviously, they're gonna get together and they need to solve the problem. When a woman gets married, then she cannot have an official position. How does that work? In terms of for this fictional setting, what it really is based on Chinese real history periods, I'd say a mixture of Tang Song Ming. Now let's talk about specifics good and bad, and why I say this drama has parts that I really like, but then things are definitely not perfect. On the positive end, number one, an overall acceptable period drama. Production quality and probably production budget-wise, if you have to compare, I think it's below A Dream of Splendor, but it's definitely above other period dramas on Tencent, such as Royal Rumor that we've seen not so long ago. Still probably tier one, production, but then at the bottom of the production quality of the tier one period dramas you can see these days. Number two, probably the best thing of this drama, the characters are written on script level, intelligent, reasonable, and overall making sense people. In this drama, the female lead, the male lead, they are normal, functioning, intelligent, logical people in their circumstances. Upon their first meeting, they're not immediately falling in love, there's no romanticizing, there's no stupid camera language and music. They are very realistic, people with realistic concerns. So when they meet, their intelligence immediately starts to run and they're both thinking from their own personal point of view, what benefits me most, what may be potentially threatening, what should I be suspecting or doubting about this stranger who comes into my life and how should I test them out? So nice to see, nobody is stupid. It immediately makes the drama engaging and interesting instead of being just another romantic story. So that's one thing I appreciate most. From episode one, you're gonna see very intelligent people and the drama is not aimed at sprinkle useless sugars from day one. Number three, this drama involves a significant amount of politics, court politics. It definitely has a level of idealization and simplification. But again, compared to a couple of recent period dramas that just in that department completely does not make sense, this drama at least on the surface makes sense. Period dramas these days that has a male lead character who's involved in the previous big failure of a battle <laughs> has some kind of resemblance to the Nirvana and Firestorm because that one is just 
too well established, I guess people just cannot get around the fact that things will look like Nirvana. So there are a couple of characters, a couple of setups looking very much like Nirvana in this drama. And there's another potentially uh, interesting storyline we haven't seen being fully developed and opened up yet, which <laughs> I cannot spoil that for you. In the second half of the drama, probably towards the last quarter is going to be very important. And this person and people who are tightly associated with this person has a really sexy storyline, I'd say. So until that happens, right now we have a relatively normal but overall acceptable quality production. And then one more thing I would add on is if you've watched recent Feng Shaofeng drama, like that one with Peng Xiaoran and got really uh, put off by how bad it looks. In this drama, he looks better, okay? And his character actually suits the actor's real age, so it doesn't feel off. As for Jing Tian, ever since Ru Tan, I think she's opened up the new chapter of her acting career. She is doing one of her better jobs in period dramas, although there's definitely room for improvement. As for the other supporting roles, they're all okay. Nobody jumps out as impressively good, but no one is a problem. So those are all the good things. Now let's talk about what's not good about this drama, and there are quite a few things. Number one, it may put you off from day one because of its epic skin smoothing. This is the worst skin smoothing I've seen from Tencent this year. And their skin gets smoothed down to the point where I feel the filter is not following the actor's faces so well that occasionally their skin wobbles. You almost feel their skin gets liquefied. Their face is about to melt off the edge. I totally don't get it. These people look already much better than normal people. Not to mention Jin Tian is naturally super, super pale for being an Asian. The limit of how pale we can get. And you skin smooth her. Totally not necessary. That may put you off. And if it does, I wouldn't blame you. Number two, a lot of dubbing, particularly the two leads. For Jin Tian, she gets dubbed by Chiao Shiyu, who is <laughs> so well known in China, who is is the Dili Reba dubber. So most of Dili Reba's characters, like 90 percent are dubbed by her. If you watch a lot of Dili Reba drama, it's gonna be a pain for you to watch this one because you're gonna see Jin Tian's face speaking and you're gonna hear Dili Reba's voice. A lot of people have problems with that and again, I wouldn't blame you. I couldn't get used to it. Then Feng Xiaofeng gets dubbed by a not so well-known and doesn't show up that much in drama and dubber. This guy has a very aged voice. It suits the character, I'd say. It actually suits Feng Xiaofeng's role, but because you know what Feng Xiaofeng sounds like and he sounds so different. Honestly, by this point, 18 episodes, I still could and quite get used to it. I'd rather hear Feng Shaofeng's own voice because he's got good in love line delivery. Really, there's no need. So dubbing for this drama really takes the rating down for me. The third thing I'm not so happy with is the earlier stage of this drama. It's quite interesting. You see the two intelligent leads trying to play off each other and the tension it just feels really nice. As the story moves on to stage two, when she becomes an official, it starts to slow down a bit. I think the drama can be condensed down further. One last thing that I hope they didn't do it so much is it has a lot of on the nose things. The characters are given the lines to speak in their conversations to clearly set up. They are this type of characters. They have this type of morals. They're good people. They have, let's say, a very advanced <laughs> ideas about how the world works and what is values of individuals. Their thinking are far ahead of their time, which I mean is normal in this type of writing, but I think it can be done with a more subtle style instead of not so bad as preaching, but close to it, particularly in the female lead's mouth when she has any opportunities to really not speak into the other characters in the scene, but actually speak into the watching audiences and the value that is popular these days. Women's individuality, women's independence, not discriminating against people based on their profession or what the society thinks of them. A lot of those things. Right? It's fine for the character to believe in that, but I think there are more subtle ways. And I think that comes from the writing not being so polished, revisioned, and then being carefully combed through. But then maybe they did it intentionally because they know it's gonna make it more noticeable. And then honestly speaking, among the demographics of drama watchers, a lot of people really need you to actually tell them in their face about what it is, otherwise they don't get it. Overall, this drama is pretty watchable. The unfortunate thing about this drama is it's airing on Tencent, and Tencent is really not doing much promoting it on short video platforms or doing any types of help for this drama, so it hardly gets 
any exposure anywhere. If you look at internet, all types of different apps and how they promote stuff, the tags, the numbers of views, this drama is like at the bottom list of all the dramas that are ongoing right now. Seems Tencent actually put some money into making this drama, so it does not quite make sense that they are not trying to promote it at all. Ever since Rattan, you know, Jing Tian's popularity has definitely come up. And also she has this sympathy filter in public's opinion these days because of the previous ex-boyfriend she's got. Could have promoted this harder and it probably will get more noticed. Unfortunately, Tencent is not doing that. So I'm not seeing this drama suddenly become super hot towards the second half of airing and probably it's just gonna end up as what it is now. I would recommend this drama to people who like Jin Tian, like Feng Shaofeng, like an overall acceptable intelligence and logic level pair drama. These days we really don't have a very good pair drama dramas going on, so among the ones you can pick, this one probably is one of the better ones. That should conclude my first impression and probably also final review on the drama Zhuo Zhuo Feng Liu, The Legend of Zhuo Hua. Thank you for watching Omni X, I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.